I'm John Butcherelli, Major Infantry, United States Army retired, President of Black Sheep Milson. The PTSD Milsom Challenge is a program that I started to raise awareness about PTSD and the sport of Milsim and the benefits that it provides to veterans with PTSD. It's a lifetime commitment from me to the community uh, to uh, help veterans, both uh, military and law enforcement, uh, deal with their PTSD symptoms. Hi, I'm G.I. Jen with Warrior Talk Radio. And I am here today supporting Major Bucciarelli at the Black Sheep Milsim Challenge. I was put in contact with Major Bucciarelli um, through Tactical Milsim Magazine and just love what he's doing, love the support that he's giving to our warriors and uh, the work that he's doing to bring awareness to PTSD is super important. We really need to get the message out that, you know, immersion therapy is very, very good for PTSD. My name is Robert Hendricks. Uh, I was an ET, uh, special warfare uh, in the Navy. I'm uh, Captain Alexander Wingate. Uh, I originally was stationed in Fort Lewis, Washington uh, with the 1st of the 23rd Infantry Regiment, 3rd Striker Brigade, uh, 2nd ID. Found out about this event and I came on down. Staff Sergeant Alexander Brown, U.S. Army, stationed at Fort Jackson, uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Um, currently with the, the Training and Doctrine Command running a range down there. Our MILSIM Team Archangel is pretty much a, a group of active duty and former active duty or, or reserve military people, military veterans, that are taking our organization, taking our experience and applying it to, applying it to, to the MILSIM community. I think that, again, immersion therapy is huge. I mean, what you're doing is you're replacing a very traumatic memory, something where there's fear and panic involved, to going to something that's a, very similar in like the surroundings, but it's not a dangerous situation. It's not a life-threatening situation. Uh, the camaraderie that we had in the military uh, actually transcends into the MILSEM. Um, you get to know the guys. It's just like having, you know, your old unit. Um, and uh, it kind of helps, you know, the bonding process and some of the stuff that, as a serviceman, I was used to, uh, you know, we have here, so. The VA does not recognize immersion therapy as a treatment. Um, currently, there's not really, you know, from what I've seen, the VA is, you know, deny, 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 then you finally get in to get treatment, and then it's medicate, 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 and then, you know, we've got guys that either don't want to seek treatment because of the stigma involved, or we have people that have gone in to seek treatment and they just get drugged up and don't like the way they feel. It's certainly not an on and off switch. There's a wide variety. It's, it's, a, it's a real stat. You can dial it up, you can dial it back. Well, you can't. The, op the operator of the PTSD cannot dial it up, dial it back. Otherwise, we just turn it off. But, like, for, for example, I mean, I, I have a rough time sleeping at night. Okay, Roger. That's just one little thing. I love being in crowds. That's another thing. I know someone else who he can't stand being in, being in crowds. He can't stand, uh, he can barely stand his family. Um, I know... Yeah, I've, I've got plenty of experience as far as dealing with people with a variety of p different PTSD issues. And it's not so much like, oh, it's PTSD or not. There's a big gray scale and a lot of other things in their lives affect it. I have never had PTSD, or at least that I know of. I guess maybe someone no one really knows. I, but I've, I've had friends that have had it. Um, uh, someone that, that before I deployed, I, I had a friend from home and, and he was going through a lot of the symptoms of PTSD. And, uh, I remember my, my father was talking to a, a, a VA counselor that we knew as a friend of the family and we were talking about the symptoms that he was showing and what she had seen with other type of veterans, you know, Vietnam and Gulf War. And a lot of the same symptoms are showing up, and but it's just manifesting itself in a different way. I myself was never diagnosed with PTSD. Uh, I think I have some small anxieties or whatever from being in the military and some of the things that we saw um, and this kind of helps it's you know it's a fun environment you come out you actually get to play do the same things you did uh, when you were active uh, except 
you know, it's not real steel and there's not the, uh, the chance of one of your buddies, uh, you know, dying. So it, it, it kind of helps. We need to do more as a community as a whole to try to help our warriors get back into life. And, you know, this is a perfect way to do it because you're building, you know, a bond with your brothers, very similar to when you're on a team or in a unit. And then it's also bridging the gap between the military and civilian life. So the civilians at home are starting to learn a lot more about what our warriors are going through. And there's a little bit more of an understanding of, you know, hey, this is very stressful to be, you know, in a milsim game. But then to think about it when you're actually, you know, taking that and putting it in real world experience when the warriors are actually getting shot at with real weapons. So it, it really helps build a bridge of understanding. Uh, I, I'm behind using Milsim to help with PTSD. I think its application, um, it gives veterans a chance to, you know, either relive an experience, but in a way that's safe. It lets them go back and try something new or try something that they think may have helped and to see if it would have worked. I think one of the worst things that, that I experienced in, in the Army was uh, when I when I had a few soldiers get hurt was realizing that there was some responsibility, you know, something I could have done. There's enough times that I've had the chance to go back and say, well, what if I tried it this way? And I saw the results and, and most often than not, it just kind of reaffirmed in my brain, you know, okay. They're, that happened and you, you realize it may have been different, it may not have, but in reality you just realize that you kind of have to live with those experiences. You're, you're replacing bad memories with good. Uh, you know, the events here, it, you know, it's points at the end of the day, everybody's still alive, everybody had a blast, you know, you shoot guys, three, three minutes later you're fist bumping with them saying, man, that was an awesome shot, you know, wait, you know, great stack on the doors or whatever. Um, and it just, the, the camaraderie helps because it, it releases tension and uh, things that you probably wouldn't talk to to anybody else uh, that was not there. And these guys kind of understand. It can, it can, it could backfire. It could. Or at the same time, it's, I would say it's not going to make anything more worse. If you get, if you get shot at or you get, you get shot while deployed, and then you get PTSD from that one event and you come out here and you get shot with BBs is, is all of a sudden that may have a short term trigger, but it's not going to make any long term, anything long term worse. So what's the point of just giving it a shot and no pun intended, but then at, but then at the same time, could it, could it make soldiers, veterans that have PTSD, could it make them feel better? I can't tell you how many regrets I have training, do, just training for the war people dying during training. Forget about, forget about overseas. So when I come out here and I train and I see successes, it kind of makes up for all that. You can get it as immersed as you want to get, really. Um, the sounds that they play, you know, 24 hours, cannons, gunfire, you know, sounds from a mosque, things that you would have heard overseas. Um, the first couple hours, it's just, a, it's just an audio tape. But after a while, and guns, and you, you hear the gunfire, and bees flying past you, you really start to get into the character, and, and it starts to feel like a true battle situation. It goes back to, again, I mean, I, I know I talked to the Major, and we've had these discussions before, and I've seen some of the clips from different events that he's done. So I had an understanding of, you know, what it was to be like, you know, to have a Milsim event, a Black Sheep Milsim event, um, but to actually go through it for 24 hours with 25 minutes of sleep and people shooting at you and running up and down stairs and you're, you know, in your military gear and I had my kit on and your, your weapon weighs a certain amount and you're literally running all over the place and hiding from the enemy and trying to attack the enemy and all this other stuff. It's, I think I'm most surprising how exhausted I am. Uh, if nobody's ever done it, you, you've got to try it. Uh, even if you weren't in the military, uh, the, the, the honor that, that most of the military guys carry that, that trans, transcends into here, um, is it's just, it's something that you have to experience. And, uh, it, it really helps because you know you have brothers that have gone through the same things that you've done. Um, and uh, don't want to get choked up. 
but uh, uh, it helps to know that there are other people out there that, that have gone through things like you have and you can actually bond and share with them. You look at how exhausted everybody is and everybody is exhausted and you think about it, that's 24 hours out of your life in a controlled environment where people are shooting BBs at you. And then you stop and you think about what the veterans, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get upset, what our active duty military does and what our veterans have done for us. And they do this on a daily basis for weeks and sometimes months at a time. And, you know, without breaks and people really shooting at them. And it kind of makes you sit back and go, wow, you know, I had no clue. If I know I did something terrible, or if in me or anybody, I know I did something terrible. And then, and all I do is beat myself up about it all day, every day. That's not exactly the same thing as PTSD. Right. But you can still have, you can still be very timid. You could still have suicidal thoughts, whatever the case may be. But then you come out here and you, and then you actually fix what you did wrong. Now you're like, I feel better now. That's what makes me feel good. That's what makes me keep wanting to come out to these events. It gave me like an empowered feeling. I mean, now I know what I can push my body to. I know what I can push my mind to. And you know, the major talks about you hit a wall in this event. And I think everybody does. I hit several walls, but was able to push through it. And I felt stronger and more self-confident. And, you know, again, part of a team, part of a, a family now. And I just think that it would do nothing but help our warriors with PTSD and, you know, our civilians with PTSD, you know, rape victims as well. I think that if they went through something like this and, and found that they could push through those things, it would be amazing. You know, as these events get, get bigger, starting that conversation at events saying, hey, you know, do you know members of the military? Do you know veterans? Do you know guys that have PTSD? If you do, bring them forward. And um, a way I think we could we could support them that that I think would work is, you know, if it, if John runs an event and he says if you got someone who's got PTSD um, that you want to have at this event and whatnot, you know, he can show up without having to worry about anything. He can show up and. Um, you bring him, we'll make sure he's got gear, we'll make sure he has a weapon. He has to pay for a thing. He just has to show up and try it out. Um, how that would go about it, I don't know, but I think that if you did all those things and you gave them no excuse otherwise other than to say just to say no, and you give them that opportunity, I think they would suddenly realize, you know, wow, I'm hooked. Now I want to play. And the time they would have spent focused on something that was detrimental, now they've got something, a good outlet to work through. I don't think anybody really has heard about it yet. Um, most people don't realize the connection, you know, from the the, the real uh, military life, you know, where you're shooting real steel, and coming here and, and doing it in a form that's non-lethal. And I just, I don't think they've made that connection yet. I think one of the stigmas that it has right now is it's a backyard game. It's, you know, conceived as something where it's just chaos and those people playing BB Wars, and, and we joke constantly that it is BB Wars, but I, once they realize it's legitimate, or once they realize that the platform is legitimate, um, I think that'll change the tone. I think once you change the tone um, among members of you know the military community and veterans and people that have PTSD, I, I think it'll all start to roll pretty smoothly. I think that you, you would see somewhere like the VA being willing to support something like that because A, the military recognizes it as being something legitimate. You know, the whole immersion therapy for PTSD, I think is going to be one of the leading therapies in the future and I think that more people need to start paying attention to it.